to this video with me here today once again with the topic of Lumen Union and as you know this is my greatest love and devotion my greatest expression in this lifetime because this is something I'm devoted to with such depth with such precision and high maintenance level of truly dedicating every part of your life to this notion so today I want to talk about of the sacred union here as Gamos once again in a overlighted sense again and I want to use this book uh, the hermetic marriage so I have actually read this one you know I've been showing it to you and it is from Manly P Hall it is a study in the philosophy of the thrice greatest uh, Hermes um, but it is just amazing book this is such a synthesis book when I actually read it I read it in probably one day or day and a half and it's really thin book but it has such depth of understanding in it that when I read it I was actually shaking and I was so excited I was like oh my god it's such a great book it's so amazing and I so rarely get to do this because I'm noticing that my body will read the vibration coming through and when someone truly writes from wisdom comprehension that's deep that has so much understanding that's not just theological in nature but you know it's almost like it transcends the time and space that we live in now and it moves into this timeless essence of understanding and you know when i got to the end of the book and it says the end i was like yes the end this is like such a full comprehension of this um i want to actually present some viewpoints here uh, to give you a little bit of the demonstration but i truly advise you to really get this book you know, uh, he has so many books and I listen to his lectures a lot. Um, it's just like so much of what I know, you know, is an essence uh, comes through and it's just able to distill itself in this way. Um, so the idea of this deep marriage that's alchemical in nature, that's a part of the hermetic marriage, uh, whatever you may call it, a hermetic marriage for me means marriage, marriage in divine trinity. It means a complete union of all the aspects within you that if you ever do come into a partnership with another person that's a conscious reflection of that will just be a continuation of that journey. But some of the predecessing factors I want to talk about here and uh, you know I don't know where to start because there's so much more uh, to share but some of the uh, reference points from this book I really want to emphasize myself and because this time of you know, going deeper into love uh, means different things for us. You know, for someone it means uh, wanting to meet someone new, a new love life, uh, you know, <laughs> expression or whatever. But for those of us who are truly devotees of the highest, for us, this journey means more devotion, more crystallization of what we're meant to be and embody as in love and form, divine union and form. So in my previous videos dedicated to Lumen Union, you know, I've been talking a lot about the higher purpose of sacred union and then these partnerships coming together standing in this sacred fire which is this anointed christ itself and i go much deeper into that in a love session i just recently recorded it's for my uh, valentine's day celebration and i went directly to my patreon group and it was uh, quite long an hour and 20 minutes or something of just channeling love and messages and how they may assist our journey of going deeper into this nature of our own immaculate design so i want to talk about and read you maybe some of the verses from the book so that you're going to have an idea of what i'm talking about and how awesome this is because like i said i can so rarely find material that my being will feel that's really coming from this higher space because it's so profound it's the way it's put together it just vibrates with every pulse of me i like structure that's more than just a linear or a factual sharing or just knowledge many people as you know they have knowledge but to write in such a synthesized way my energy just loves it because when something's not for me or it's too mental even if someone has lots of knowledge 
but it's still not written from this higher aspect that's this greater spirit self sometimes i will have difficulty in reading it but this was just like you know uh kind of like grasping at it from this level of completion so i want to talk about some of the ideas he's been presenting here and they're just so amazing uh, because he talks about the so-called understanding of the being put in a cosmic perspective. And you know that man as a being was created in the image of likeness of the deities that in a way, you know, conspire to bring this world into manifest creation. But that everything in our design and our living structure is made to... Um, reflect that so we can learn about cosmology by just studying the anatomy of the human body and how much this plays this role of studying that and then studying the ancient scriptures what this uh, tantric ancient scriptures truly meant um, because you know uh, when you study kundalini from the ancient tantric tradition uh, and there's one um, beautiful lecture from manly about the kundalini and this uh, chakric system and the gland system in our body how it responds to the merging of the heart and the brain and how basically the whole chakra column is the system is reflected it's basically here in the brain it's like seven chambers that are these vortices centers in our body are absorbed they're they're located here in the brain area and when this living christos which is basically a fluid of life it is a spirit that has lifted up our bodies that has created the state of resurrected beingness and I love this description he gives. I don't know where it is exactly. I hope I can find it. Um, but here, you know, as the way he describes these ancient myths or verses from the scriptures, the way it's um, translated is just amazing because it's so much on point and so crystallized. What Christ consciousness truly means. What is immaculate conception truly means. It just puts you... In such a grounded perspective because you know the modern religion which in many cases is so fanatic in its expression because it doesn't share a full understanding it doesn't come from that space of the christed perspective that born from within you you can have a greater grasp on reality and you can create from there on um, and it basically kind of like puts those ancient truths back as pillars right and it talks about one example here is you know, this is a very well-known verse, right? How the uh, gods of man saw the daughters of earth and then wanted to blend with them or copulate with them or merge with them. But he represents everything here as a reflection of cosmology, right? So the sun emanating its rays that feed and nourish the planetary bodies. How the planets were actually seen as these daughters of earth, right? So life moved into sustenance of that life and how this union is basically the rising and resurrection of spirit within our bodies because uh, you know he he gives one example here how in the islamic tradition women are seen as not having souls and how in this modern day and age this has been so deeply misinterpreted which causes you know a lot of pain and suffering it has endowed so much suffering on the feminine part of population because this was so mis placed and misunderstood what this actually meant was that the the matter itself because the feminine principle was here represented as matter you know earth the anim animated matter which then we lift with the spirit spirit's presence moves into the bodies and animates and reanimates them so the union of spirit and matter which is what i talk about myself creates this um perfection perfection of bodies bodies becoming perfected becoming refined so when you say well the woman does not have a soul you are taking things literally and he emphasized so much uh, these mistakes when scripture and divine word is taken literally instead of studied with great depth of wisdom and how much you know uh, ill being comes from that right so i'm going to try to read you some of the verses but basically the the emphasized part i want to talk about here is the uh, immaculate conception because he presents such a great uh, idea here of how this is perfecting our body because he stresses out that if we continue to birth bad bodies which is just reproduce the bodies that have not been purified not being refined you know uh, the seed that's born of them is you know it cannot 
exist at a higher level. And he talks about many great minds who kind of like wait behind the scenes, but they can't move into form or this incarnational cycle because the bodies are not able to hold their light. And why world the world is so many times in trouble um, is because of this. And so it's our responsibility to build better bodies. And also in ancient times when certain cultures just, you know, just, they were just eradicated completely when a better built civilization came and just tore them down, you know, it just totally destroyed them because they knew that they were kind of like needing to spread their seed, which was developed in a way that sustained the body at a higher degree, right? So... Uh, let me see where I could begin reading you some of the um, things. Also, I want to say, when he talks about the hermet hermetic marriage, uh, I want to use this these words that he used as an hermaphrodite, right? Representing this androgynous human being. So the word hermaphrodites, right? Uh, Hermes means fire, vitality. Aphrodite means goddess of water. So here it talks about this androgynous form as in uh, this to represent the duality of all living things this word is coined from hermes fire vitality and aphrodite the goddess of water the great hermetic and alchemical axiom was make the fire to burn in the water and the water to feed the fire right and it talks about this life force again right i teach this life force cultivation and the building of the universal temple so knowing that everything in the ancient cultures was even uh, described through the serpent, you know, the serpent gods, uh, everything was formulated this way. But again, we misinterpreted that, right? It, the serpent also meant savior in many ways, right? Um, as you know, in the Aztecs and Incas tradition, this was called Quetzalcoatl. And in different parts of the world, it was known as the serpent kings. So um, in Tibet, it was symbolic of the vital energies of the human body, right? The serpent life force moving and uh, rushing through the body um and then the wand right uh, even in i think it was in the bible you know you hold the wand and there's seven points of light like seven angelic forces it literally represents your spinal column uh, and the life force moving through it so the magic wand was the spinal canal and through this canal runs a sacred liquid called fire oil so this was in greek called Christos, and this is what I meant when I mentioned this. So it meant it was a savior or redeemer of things, but this was not a savior of the external nature, how they presented it and distorted it. But it was rising up your body and lifting it to a higher octave so you could really become a divine personage, a divine human being. So the Hermetic philosophers recognized this essence in man as a distillation of universal life derived from atmosphere the sunlight the rays of the stars and the food which he eats this universal vitality upon which all living things draw is probably the origin of the myths of the gods who died for mankind it is undoubtedly the origin of the legend of the last supper where man eternally maintains himself upon the body and the blood of the spirit of universal energy here blood is represented so differently than you know uh, these blood rituals that through the dark magical arts that are more like black magic not white magic has been used it was corrupted that in, in truth that lifts up these lower energies or uh, demonic more like we describe them like that energies that dwell in realms unseen there is a veil but this usage of blood in non-sacred ways and acts uh, which basically go against the human spirit it will invoke these energies to come and feed and um, basically they will take the vital life forces of the body because in in a way we're not using them ourselves with integrity when we're doing these blood rituals in a very non-understood way that's basically linked with murder right or with sacrifice that's basically it's not sacrifice it's murder so it's because this interpretation was so falsified to an extent that man lost his connection to his true roots that were divine and how this um whole uh, sacrifice basically meant the sacrifice of the lower for the higher i've been talking about that a lot of times so the sun right here was represented with the mind as the positive pole and the moon of the heart of the negative pole together you know these both aspects being of the soul and we when we unite these forces we are in alchemical marriage 
right? So different avenues of expression of this would be mental and spiritual and emotional and physical. And the union in terms of science plus theology meeting is the marriage of the heart and mind or the two halves of every nature. It was the union of strength and beauty, inspiration and courage, and in its greatest expression, the union of science and theology of God um, or God and nature. So the great need now of this alliance is plainly evident in the world today where cold intellectualism and commercialism need for finer uh, sentiments, um, need these sentiments of friendliness and altruism to offset their heartless cruelty. On another hand, fanaticism, blind faith, and ungoverned emotionalism required the strong hand of logic and reason to stir them away from the rocks of insanity um, and death. So perfect equilibrium in nature of people is seldom met with. In fact, it is in nature's greatest rarity. A person who has that perfectly balanced viewpoint is the living philosopher's stone, right? That's the chemical term as well. For he has strength matched with kindness, kindliness and justice tempered with mercy. So also the hermetic anatomy teaches the yin and the yang principles and the androgynous nature of spirit, which is God, and it is both father and mother. And it states in Genesis, God created man in his own image, male and female, he created he them. And this refers that God is both male and female. It's not a deprivation of, of each. So as the spirit of man is of God, it must partake of the androgynous nature of its parents. And this, as you will see, will lead to this topic of immaculate conception or design. So let us say that... the. Um, <clears throat> In harmony with the Eastern sages, the sex does not exist in spirit any more than it does in the embryo before the third month of parental life. So that's the androgynous nature of the seed. And sex, in terms of, you know, being gender, is polarization of the body, a manifestation of spirit. But the germ of life itself is capable of projecting both the positive and negative rays. And positive and negative, again, can be misinterpreted in a realm. Uh, negative meaning bad, positive being good, no. Um, it's almost like saying feminine principles, masculine principles, and that's enough, right? Um, so, uh, let me see that. The goal was that it would be um, about ultimately gaining the perfection, which no living creature has ever yet gained in one appearance in the world, right? Um and now it also talks about how in our time, our day and age, the circle of creative forces in the human body is broken. So the energy is not flowing, right, um, within us. And our poles, right, the north and the south pole in our body, the circuitry has almost been disrupted. This means that in the masculine, you know, when it's truly in equilibrium, in the masculine sex, the positive pole of the life force is in the brain. The negative pole is used for generative purposes. And in the feminine sex, the negative pole is in the brain and the positive pole is used for generative purposes. Okay, so here to the hermeticist, marriage is therefore symbolic of the ultimate reunion of the two halves of each individual's androgynous nature when, after repeated appearances and associations, each establishes equilibrium within his own constitution. The wedding ring was accepted by the ancients as being symbolic of the golden ring of the spirit fire, which connected the spiritual and material natures of every individual. These ancient philosophers have predicted that ultimately the present methods of reproduction will be abolished and both halves of the spirit free fire will be turned into the brain. So that's reaching this unification of polarity. And... One of them now finds its polarity in the pituitary body and the other in the pineal gland. So together you have this circle, circuit flowing within them and this was broken at this time. So also known as, you know, the eye of Shiva um, and so, so on. So the hermetic marriage is therefore an individual matter involving the recognition of individual completeness. And more than that, requiring of those who aspire to it, it is sincere effort to be balanced sane and consistent in everything they do. He really stresses the consistency of developing our spiritual qualities because if you only develop one attribute but neglect the other, again, makes you, you know, disrupt these uh, poles. Um, so, yeah. Um, in the and ch chemical, sorry, uh, retorts and virals, we recognize the body's glands and organs of man and in the chemicals, the essences and 
forces cursing through the body of man. And in alchemy, right, we talk about bodies, glands, and organs, and in chemistry, essences and forces that move through or curse through. Um, so this is all very interesting, and I want to get to the last part because there's so much here. You know, I cannot read you the whole, the whole book. <laughs> and this experience of reaching that inner wisdom experience of meeting the inner, uh, inner savior or the resurrector within, and it's basically truly what, has been in the Bible, but has been interpreted, misinterpreted, and also in other scriptures because it was taken literally. But it all refers to these life force processes and how we raise the energy so that it comes and builds, rebuilds the circuitry that was once broken because there was a disconnection between the heart and the mind. Um, now, the Immaculate Conception now, because, you know, again, it was falsely translated into meaning birth without intercourse or without coming together it's just a divine birth but what it truly means here is that there's a birth occurring in the body that has been prepared it has been purified so he gives an example of mary and joseph that have been trained by the essenes or in the circles of these beings um, trained in these teachings and life or training teachings all of that so they could build their bodies within these higher fine natures so that the manifestation of the child coming in within through their union would be one who would leave a great legacy because lower bodies cannot produce that they kind of attract to them the same vibratory expressions right so let's say souls who are less developed souls will never achieve something greater uh, because they simply can't there's so much uh, density there that has never been cleansed right um one other thing that he talks about the marriage being so misunderstood, as you know, was that in the ancient tradition, marriage, right, as a contract, as an agreement, basically represented a pathway through which people were learning to recognize the aspects of themselves in another gender. So they could eventually come into union. But now even that, the meaning of marriage has been, as you know, distorted, has been corrupted, is never, you know, is not taken for sacred anymore, or it's again, it's seen just as a contract and you have to stick with it. And it's it's blindfoldedly stepped into without seeing a higher purpose of that like it once used to be in the ancient times. So as it says here, uh, the idea of the Immaculate Conception is by no means original with Christianity. Uh-uh-uh, right? <laughs> if they think they have it all uh, coming out from their... Um, own um, dogma but it's not so it is one of the oldest concepts of the human mind for the gods of a hundred races and a thousand generations have been born of immaculate conceptions this means they have been birthed through these higher principles so these higher beings who were meant to serve humanity at that time and still do were able to come through the purified bodies that held uh, you know their birthing uh, process so um yeah, with, it, it comes through the immutable law of cause and effect and that of the great glorious and undefiled spirit could come into the world and manifest only through an undefiled body, right? So when the gods found it necessary to take upon themselves bodies of clay, right, dense bodies, and enter this world of defiled things, these forms were prepared. So the scriptures have told us, right? It says here in a mysterious way. Their coming was heralded by angelic presences, divas, and hosts of spiritual beings. The mass of the human race felt that with the coming of a great mind, something divine came into the world. And that is, its coming must be prepared for, and its temple made as perfect as man was capable of designing it. And it doesn't mean in any way you're chosen by God, and you will have the only offspring that, that is of God, and it's, it's so corrupted. Uh, in truth, what the purpose of a lumen union at this time is that if these higher essence couples come together, they've both purified their lower bodies to the degree when their higher qualities of soul can come into this plane of existence, can draw forth. Uh, it's like channeling these higher energies because we can't do that if, if it's only the consciousness that's able to perceive them, but we can't channel them, we can't utilize them. So that's why the bodily process is so important. So they knew that the better the body in its organic quality, the broader the mind, the deeper the understanding, the more noble the position that such a one could make in this world. Right? So they were actually working on purifying the lives of the parents. And here again, it gives this example with the Essenes 
or Nazarites, and then a group of holy men and women who lived in seclusion among the hill, as you know, in the Holy Lands. And uh, they were actually supposed to be of Hindu origin. They were ascetics, and how Mary and Joseph were trained here uh, prior to uh, the ministry, right? Um, and how many, many of important personages at that time were guided uh, at that uh, level of, of sacred rites. So the great need of the world today is better bodies. Better bodies mean better lives and nobler outlooks. This in no way, in no way means better looking, right? It's, it's so trivialized now, this idea of the body. And, um, you know, it's just been... I see so much narcissism nowadays in the world. Uh, the beauty that comes as a reflection of the refined beauty of the soul is one thing. But constant obsession with the self and all that's truly trivial, that is... Uh, almost like uh, not seeing the body as sacred but more of a it's like an obsession there's a fine line between that and I see so much of this nowadays it's everyone now is the prettiest the best better looking selfie 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 right it's it's it has kind of corrupted the, the human soul within right um, so it says here that out of the infinite, the law of attraction draws into incarnation lives and intelligences in harmony with the bodies in which they are to dwell. So the more prepared the parents, right? And I've talked about this, I think, last year in this conception. I think it was a video about immaculate conception and how the birthing of these new children is connected with that. Um, but I just really, really love this scripture to recommend you with this type of work to go deeper, to study this, because this relates and brings together many of the ancient scriptures, how it was all there already. So great souls cannot enter, right, these lower bodies. So the Immaculate Conception must first become a reality in the world before the demigods of old can walk in the earth again, for these great minds must have their vehicles built according to the law. Here, bodies are seen as vehicles for spirit. And that is the primary mission for a lumen union. It's not to show off, we are twin flames, look at us on social media. It, no, <laughs> sorry, I don't, you know, I sometimes I joke around, but still, you know, um, the point I'm making here is we've stopped seeing this as such a sacred preparational process. We just take things for granted, right? Um, so today, many of the builders of the bodies are lawless, thoughtless, irresponsible, and selfish to the nth degree. He's so right. So into the world came the things which they have thus drawn to themselves by virtue of the law of attraction. In response to this law, souls come to inhabit the bodies that they have built. Their parents pay the price by incorrigibility of the lives which they have thereby evoked. So there is but one answer, build better bodies. That is the message truly that Immaculate Conception brings. When this is done, a nobler and better race will come to dwell in them. This is the stupendous problem that humanity faces. And unless it be solved, race suicide is inevitable. For those who are coming in today are as unfit to give orders as they're unwilling to receive them. Right? Um, complete egoism. So, um, yeah, this talks about what I've said before. When a noble being is, it has two choices, right? If it wants to incarnate, one is to come through and struggle on in a mediocre existence, right? Because the body was not built. Uh, the DNA has not been refined. And the other is to remain waiting, hoping that someday a nobler vehicle will be prepared for it. And that in turn means that the mission of these Lumen unions are building those um, kind of like vortices, but they have to be created through their bodies. So they're building a legacy. It's almost like a royal wedding or heritage that is not like an outside appearance looking good or all these things that has nothing at all to do with that. But that your body is created with the deepest integrity, with knowing the laws of spirit, embodying um the heart of the soul and then building better bodies to assist the civilization or the making or shifting of a human civilization so building proper form for that so great souls cannot come or be known here until the bridge is built between the living and the unborn until ideal homes are found and efficient bodies are built in which they may function true to the great law of progress now as you know there's a lot of statics there's a few beings can channel these higher souls, uh, these crystal children, how they're called, 
um, I'm one of these beings. So, you know, um, uh, the way I was, they were showing me the way I was choosing to come into birth and the agreement I already had and the, the knowing of the soul that was my mother was already, I knew her from the times that I worked with her, the higher realms as she was um, kind of coming for healing, but she had to finish such a lifetime synthesis and had such an awareness that she even was able to hold, right? Me as a choice. And she was still wavering a bit, right? It was a tougher choice for her, but she said, yes, I can do it eventually, right? So um, the Immaculate Conception is not a miracle. This is the key teaching here today. It is actually the realization of the responsibilities and sanctities of parenthood. I love this. It is so realistic and true. In which by right living, right thought, and right attitude, an opportunity is given for higher and nobler souls to come into the world and glorify our ethics by their presence. This was also the story of the birth of Jesus, who watched over by the priest, was given a body as nearly perfect as the conditions of that age would permit. And now know how much we are capable of achieving now right? So there's beings of great soul descents and ancestry that are willing, that are kind of like just beneath the whale and they're waiting. And I was shown that a huge part of my mission is to encourage this. So those who would come together in these couplings would formulate these, um, you know, births of offspring and children in a very conscious way. Last year, I've shared uh, this similar topic in relation to Barbara Han Clow's book because she mentioned how in ancient rites they had to prepare for these great souls through orgasmic birth. So that's also why I teach the cosmic orgasm course in many ways because these beings were chosen to be parents of souls who are now you know, being attracted. The planet is calling forth, but a body stands as a bridge. That is a necessity, right? Okay. Um, and I love this example. The master, right? Jesus told the story in the parable of the new wine and the old bottles. Again, not to be taken literally. He recognized the fundamental need of a new organization for a new idea. And he also knew the fundamental need of a new clean body as the major factor in growth and progress. If we do not prepare higher types of bodies for those higher grades of intelligence necessary to rule a civilization, then a new race will have to be given to the world that the spirit of progress may not be thwarted in her plan. So it's like, either way, when spirit has a greater divine plan, there's a calling, it will occur, it will happen. So heredity, which means the ancestry, right, is not purely a spiritual heritage, for a man inherits only from himself in the spiritual sense of the world, if you know what it's meant here. It does not hold true to some degree, it does hold true to some degree, however, with regard to the substances from which bodies are made. The Immaculate Conception is therefore a vital factor in heredity, for it teaches that to noble parents come noble children. Integrity meets integrity. Love meets love. Uh, once uh, someone told me love only gives birth to love, and it's true. So while those attitudes and ideals are false, um, whose attitudes are false can give to the world only plagues that are worse than nothing at all. <laughs> family so to the point spiritual heredity draws lives into incarnation through type attraction physical heredity limits the body and its efficiency to the material from which it is formed so it is really really important and as a philosophical problem the immaculate conception may be summarized as follows immaculate means clean it has nothing to do with miracles. The Immaculate Conception means a clean birth in which the highest and finest of nature's laws are brought to bear upon the masterpiece of nature's labors, the formation of bodies for the habitations of living beings. Imagine there's this great master being and he wants to come or she wants to come. It's, it's right. It's no gender there. Uh, but wants to come but the parent uh, sort of lineage has so many patterns still to work through that that being would have to use so much of their force of their life force in this incarnation they would choose to even get to the point of starting to walk their mission and they say well they have to evaluate whether that's worthy or not so in true nature the pillars right i've talked about these power soul couples They've actually come because their power to move through these patterns was so strong. And they, when they would sort of break through with their incarnations, it would be much easier for the collective to also engage in this clean birth, which would mean their energetics would sort of imbue uh, the collective energetics with what the first few chosen ones had to go through. So let's take an example. I was 
born in 83, right? And at that time, it wasn't yet, you know, the bodies still held a lot of, you know, it was just the beginning point. At 87, we had the, uh, the convergence point, right? And a lot of uh, the veil started naturally to dissolve. But prior to that point, also, they had to be a few firstborn who would be the heroes in a way. They would say, well, our bodies are not clean, but someone has to start. We have to start with energetic transference. And this is what these beings, and I know my mother was one of these beings who was very brave to take upon this mission. And this was like Spirit was showing us so. Um, in this, this is also important here as in terms of speaking about being devoted to this purpose. I love this part because it is so important. In summing up, we may in, um, consider these three problems. First, celibacy as applied to occult students. Second, the hermetic marriage as an alchemical process. And third, a mystery of individual completeness. All advanced candidates on the path of occultism, mysticism, and kindred um, subjects must take the oath of celibacy for two very good reasons. First, they are unfitted for a kenobial life, which is, right, conjoined life, partnership. Um, and it has been said that among the ministry are found, oh, that's not important, sorry, the advanced socialist in occult work is carrying on his spiritual investigations with the transmuted essences of those forces which are normally used in reproduction. If you know what this means, it means that you're going to use a lot of your resources for reproductive purposes, but you actually in this lifetime have chosen to harness the process of immaculate design. Once you, you build this, you might be fit. And this is what I call a lumen union. It's not destined before the state of cleanliness, not just the spiritual soul descent, but in the body is created right? Because the candle cannot be burned at both ends, marriage for such types is unfair to all parties concerned. That's why I never wanted to be, even though I was asked, <laughs> to be in any serious engagement with people, with partners who were very dense, who didn't align with universal law, who are very unaware. Um, it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fit. It would take a lot of my processes and I would always get involved with their energy systems. And, uh, you know, it happened before when you are with someone that's unfit to be as your equal because they haven't done the work themselves. You're taking on a lot of their baggage and stuff and you're constantly absorbing and people who are very empathic do that. And a lot of them would say, well, I have to as an empath clean others. No, it's not your job. In hermetic marriage, everyone needs to do that within. It's a tendency to do that within. Um, yeah, um, basically, I think that's it. Here's a great truth. Because um, someone once asked an occultist, right? He said, well, what's appropriate for our growth, right? Because there's this moderacy needed and being uh, all things worked in harmony. Like he says, all things must work together. We must eat in harmony um, in his thoughts, meditate in harmony with his actions and pray in harmony with his daily life. It's not just you develop one area and you cultivate energy there, but another area is totally out of whack and there is no integrity there. And a lot of people do that. Uh, living wholesomely is really being true with what is presented to you and you needing to take that into the whole. So instead of being exceptionally virtuous concerning what you eat and completely vice ridden in anything, everything else, try being normally careful in all things. And when this occultist was asked, what are the stages of human growth? He said, I love this, to the animal man, indulgence in all things, to the human man, moderation in all things, and to the divine man, abstinence in all things earthly right? So the wise man, however, grows symmetrically and gradually over doing nothing, but building so solidly that he will not backslide within the first week. So he's practicing the law of consistency, which also is talked about here in this book. And um, people who give in the spirit of sacrifice have small credit coming to them for only those truly give, who truly give, uh, who do it for the love of it, right? So this is also an important part to understand. This is not for gain. This is a purpose. This is a lifelong training, many lifetimes training, spirit-born training. And the hermet hermetic marriage is an alchemical symbol found in the nature of all things, for the law of polarity is universal, right? Spirit itself, however, knows no polarity, but manifests itself through polarity to the accomplishment of the great work.
superiority or inferiority of sex consequently is a fallacy and hallucination being in himself androgynous each individual has one of these natures dominant and the other receptive right the marriage as in a human relationship is merely an institution whereby two persons make a contract what i was saying before um, and it's an actual purpose that it, it, it has it's twofold to fulfill the natural law of polarity in the reproduction of the species right to continue the species and second is to fulfill the spiritual law of association whereby the latent side of the natures of both parties may be stimulated by association with a personified exemplification of the functions qualities and powers laying latent in themselves right so in simple language years of associations uh, result in each sex assuming to a marked degree the viewpoints attitudes feelings uh, an individuality of the other so there's a blending experience more and more and a lot of people what they call twin flame and you know there's just a mirroring that they need so that each cultivates the feminine and masculine principle of life within themselves it's a prior accomplishment as you know and the fa masculine being the mind and association with the feminine heart and that's consciously and unconsciously becoming more and less softened and it's not too much of a strenuous effort. It's just natural flow, right? And uh, yeah, so that's, I think it is. And I want to read here, I've been really underlining this part, that hermetic marriage is symbolic of the individual who has made himself right with all things, has become one with the spirit of all things, and most of all is true to himself and to his fellow man. Human relationships lead to divine relationships, and the unfolding soul builds ever more noble mansions and vehicles for its expression. So that's the continuation that a lot of these illumined unions bring. But the highest point of illumination is when you're energetically transmitting that uh you know no, those who have these positions they will not necessarily have to have children this is what spirit shares with me they will work as at the essence level these you know couplings and i strongly know this is my purpose we are the essence builders then there's those who receive that they will be the first enfleshment or you know embodiment of that and they will literally embody this in terms of their partnership and build lineages who also um, assist the building of the new race that is coming it is to come so um and those that are completely right now felt as off course they're not even you know aware of this type of nature they're slowly going to be blended with with the unions that these are going to like blend in within society within the framework so it's like all one great divine plan plan of perfection so um only through the broadened vista of philosophy does man see hope for the narrow-minded things are seemingly hopeless if behind the apparent chaos the spirit can still discern the divine order which is moving him slowly but persistently towards adjustment with himself he will then be able to recognize the myriad ways in which the desire of the infinite is made known to his finite creations the great task of our age is to dignify human relationships, to return the divine crown to the head upon which it belongs, to purify, to cleanse, and to redeem all things, to transmute civilization as one would transmute a personal habit. The hermetic marriage is the apotheosis of the world's most abused institution, which will rise again from the slime into which it has been cast, for in its proper application and proper recognition we see the hope of the race. Yes, manly, well said. You could have done it better. If you want to get more information, watch the playlist of Illumin Union. So many topics there which uh, emphasize this whole topic and overlight it with uh, many versions of what's important on this path of sustaining it, of devoting yourself to it. Um, like I said, I have a love reading now on Patreon. I have many beloved uh, love sessions and readings there for my group. As well as you can get my courses. There's a Cosmic Beloved course. There is a Life Force Mastery course, Orgasmic course. These are all helpful on this path of owning your life force and dedicating your life in devotion to Lumen Union. I wish you so many blessings. Thank you for joining me in this session and the reading. And I love to be here. And as always, with so much love is and power. Have a beautiful, happy Valentine's Day as well with great dedication. Highest. Bye.